So in general, if you're new to the carry role, it's best to pick heroes that their skills are not that hard to execute. I know that sounds straightforward, but certain heroes like Ember Spirit I and mean, even Alchemist, who requires a lot of split pushing prowess and all that stuff, are some of the heroes you probably want to avoid because you're going to be so focused worrying on their abilities instead of really learning how to play carry properly. So heroes I would recommend for people that are just beginning as playing carry are heroes like Anti-Mage. He's really good at practicing your farming patterns. Heroes like Wraith King that are much more straightforward. Even Ursa is a very straightforward hero because you, your goal is to get enough farm to do Roche and then you uh, take Roche when it's appropriate. Other heroes that are very good for low levels are heroes like PA. She's a very straightforward farmer as well as Luna and also Juggernaut. Those are generally what I would recommend. Those heroes, while some of them have abilities that have high skill cap, in general, their farming abilities are pretty straightforward, whether that just be primarily right-clicking. And it's uh, easy to fight with your team as well because you have escape ability mechanics like on heroes like Juggernaut not, and then you have like a second life on Wraith King in case you ever get caught out. And then heroes like Anti-Mage have high escape ability as well. So it's really good to play heroes that don't necessarily get punished easily because if you play heavily position based heroes right off the bat as a carry, you're going to be so concerned about trying to learn how to farm that you're actually just going to feed because you're so worried about farming that you won't necessarily utilize their kit very well. And if you get behind on certain heroes, especially heroes like Ember Spirits with the high skill cap, uh, you'll far so far behind that uh, a couple deaths will make the game really hard to play and you won't really learn anything past the first couple deaths so it's really important to play heroes that can be more forgiving when you get caught out of position so that next time around maybe if you get caught out of position instead of dying you'll maybe lose most of your health and have to tp back to base and that's really important to not get punished as much at the low levels because otherwise you don't learn nearly as much per game um, when you're playing those kind of heroes after you've kind of gotten the hang of trying to farm as a carry, some of the better carries that can really punish the enemy team are the ones that I would recommend when it comes to being an intermediate level carry. Uh, those are generally the pub stompers, in my opinion, that are the best ones if you're kind of in the intermediate level of carrying. I think Slark is one of the best. I still think Urs is very good for intermediate carry level players. I think heroes like Drow Ranger that are position based could be something like she's more of a simpler farmer. She farms simply with right clicks, but she's based heavily on positioning. Heroes like that are really strong for the intermediate players because now that you've gotten the farming down, you can worry about positioning. And then heroes like uh, Juggernaut as well are still strong because you can utilize the healing ward and like learning techniques like tread switching on heroes like Slark, on like Juggernaut if you go treads. Heroes like Luna are really good. Once it comes down to the intermediate levels, it really comes down to efficiency. You want to focus on stuff like tread switching, stuff like uh, rotations around the map, stuff like making sure you have the proper items on the carries that you're playing and not just going the cookie cutter builds that are suggested to you every single game. And to do that, you have to pick heroes that vary. Uh, you want to pick heroes that are position-based, stuff like Drow Ranger or Anti-Mage. And then you want to pick stuff that split pushes, stuff like Anti-Mage as well, but also heroes like Slark, ones that want to be by themselves primarily. And then you also want to try to pick heroes like Gyrocopter that fight more around their team. And those are important dynamics so that you can learn how to play every aspect of a carry. The last thing you want to do as a carry is become only a farmer, only a team fighter, very one-dimensional. And if you do that early on, then you'll have a hard time breaking out of that one-dimensional play style the more you play. So at the intermediate level, it's really important to change up what kind of type of heroes you're playing and to really like know what your hero is supposed to do in most of the scenarios. And that's like what it takes to be an intermediate carry. So when it comes to being a top level carry, you know, if you're above the five, six K MMR level, I think the most important thing that people need to learn is not only farming, but making their farming patterns really push to the max. The type of heroes that are best for that in pubs, stuff like mid SF, even though he's a mid hero, is really good at practicing your efficiency, but it's also important to take the other team's farm. Heroes like Slark, I think, are some of the best for learning how to do that initially, because if you stay too long and get caught out, you can almost always escape. Heroes like Ember Spirit are really good for top level carries. Heroes like Naga Siren, if you're really trying to learn your micro as a carry. Things that in general want to be farming all the time, but show up to fights are usually the best advanced level carries. Even heroes like Necrolite are really strong for learning how to play at the top level. Even stuff like Razor, Juggernaut, stuff that likes to push towers and may not have the most innate farming speed meaning like they don't just farm really fast by default heroes like shadow fiend farm very fast 
but the heroes that don't farm necessarily very fast, it's really important to be able to get the necessary items on them as well without being able to simply flash farm. And then you can take it to the next level where now you start to play heroes from the carry role, meaning that you're the one position in the laning stage, but you're something like a clinks where once you hit the 15 minute mark, your goal is to start pressuring. This is to start taking it to the next level. Not only are you trying to get your items up, that you're pursuing timings. It's uh, really important to take heroes with hardcore timing windows. And that's what it takes to be at the top level of a carry. Um, heroes like Gyro have very hard power spikes when they hit the BKB, you know, Sanji Yasha, maybe MKB mark. Heroes like Juggernaut when they get like a Battle Fury or like a Manta really hit their peak. And it's really important as the top level carry to play heroes like that, that really hit their power spike and being able to utilize it properly. And that's really the main focus that you should have as like a top level carry is not only getting the correct farm, but utilizing it in the proper way on whatever hero you're playing. And at that point, really any heroes open to be played. It's just important that it's better to be over aggressive and learn when you're playing too greedily than it is to be really passive and never really die, but never really get as much as you possibly can out of the map. That's the best way to play as a high level carry, because the only way you can really know your limits is if you push past them, even if that gets you killed every once in a while and loses you some games. Learning something about your limits every game is the way to become a truly top level carry, whether that be to stay that extra creep wave, whether that be to try to kill a support solo and then get out when you know that they're going to react. Stuff like that, if you play too passively, you may live more often than not and your MMR may increase but you'll be one of those players that will hit their ceiling because they'll never really know how far they can push whatever hero they're playing. So it's really important to be able to not only push them to the max, but be able to play those different play styles, meaning like, you know, heroes that can peak at the 15 minute mark and then heroes that really just need to avoid fights for the first 30 minutes of the game. Whatever kind of hero you're playing is really important to play around that specific play style and being able to change that every game.